or should it be? Just a little seat salsa for you. <laughs> anyway, hey, look, my first beat. I read something in the news recently that was pretty creepy to me, very disturbing. The more I read it, the weirder it got. Maybe you saw it too. A judge in Washington, D.C. has ruled that a man who took hundreds of photos up ladies' skirts at the Lincoln Memorial did nothing illegal. He did not break the law. Christopher Cleveland was arrested on voyeurism charges last year after police spotted him taking photos up the skirts of women who were sitting above him on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. But recently, uh, D.C. Superior Court Judge Juliet McKenna dismissed the charges on the basis that, quote, no individual clothed and positioned in such a manner in a public area could have a reasonable expectation of privacy. In other words, she ruled that women who wear skirts in public can't expect privacy if they're sitting in a way that may expose their private areas. So that means a, if a creep wants to take pictures of your skirt in public, it is perfectly legal. Now, not that I should speak for everyone in the audience, but I feel like I speak for everyone in the audience when I say, what the hell? Yeah. Uh, or for those who don't want to go there, what in heaven's name? <laughs> <laughs> um, I needed some clarity on this matter, so I invited legal analyst and Harvard-trained lawyer, Ariva Martin, here to help explain this to me. Ariva! Ariva, most of us in this audience cannot understand how this can actually be legal. Yeah, Queen, this one had us all kind of scratching our heads because, first of all, this judge is a woman, mm -hmm. and we have to imagine this may have happened to her, but this is called upskirting. And yes, this judge said that men or anyone really can walk around with a camera, a video, a cell phone, and what this judge was saying is you don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy when you're out in public places. So when you're on a train, you're on a bus, you're at the Lincoln Memorial, if you're sitting with your skirt and your, you know, legs exposed, your arms exposed, anyone can take your pictures and it is not illegal. That does not feel right to no, me. That's everything creepy. about that seems wrong. Yeah. You know, I think the judge got it wrong. I think the judge took this very narrow interpretation of this antiquated, outdated law and didn't, you know, take into consideration that today with phones and, you know, smart technology, people's privacy. We're not private figures just because we're sitting out in a private place or a public place. Right. Which, which I think is going to get very tricky because as technology advances and as everyone has a camera phone, a, a cell phone, or some sort of video recorder, uh, we're going to have to, judges and, and legal experts, you guys are going to have to figure out how to adjust those. I'm not exactly sure how old that law is, but you, you're going to constantly see these sort of cases coming around where judges have to adjust these laws to apply to today's yeah, America. Reality. Yeah, and Today's here's some reality. good news. So a similar case was in Massachusetts where someone did the same thing for a woman who was on a train, and the judge threw the case out, just like the D.C. judge did. But shortly thereafter, outrage from women throughout Massachusetts caused the governor to amend their law to now make it illegal in the state of Massachusetts to engage in upskirting. So... Wow. That was good news. So... <laughs> So basically, if we become outraged enough and we make yes. enough noise to yes. our legislators or, you know, our local congressmen or yes. senators, then, then we can make a difference and change those laws. Social because this media, is not in every state. This states is... have laws against voyeurism and peeping toms, but all of these laws haven't caught up with technology. So I say to women watching your show, women all over this country, write to your legislators, get on social media, start petition drives, call, text, do whatever, because we have a right to have our private parts protected and to remain private. Yeah. <laughs> we absolutely do. We absolutely do. Thank you so much. I appreciate oh, you, you coming and helping to clear that up for me. All right. Next beat.
People Magazine has been doing a really cool thing where they ask people what advice they'd give to their younger selves. Halle Berry said she wished she could tell her younger self everything happens for a reason. The highs, the lows, it's all for, her, for a higher development. Julia Louis-Dreyfus would have told her younger self, trust your instincts and wear sunscreen. <laughs> and Viola Davis would have told her younger self, just be yourself. Who you are is good enough. <laughs> and uh, my advice to my younger self would be, never go to the Lincoln Memorial in a skirt. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> oh, gosh, I don't know what I would have told my younger, younger self. I probably would go along with just be yourself, just like Viola. Do your thing, you'll find your way. Uh, for my final beat, I want to talk about somebody who, who's young, but she doesn't really need any advice. Her name is Malala Yousafzai. She is only 17 years old. You feel free. And she just won the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm sure you remember this brave young girl who made headlines two years ago when she was shot in the head by the Taliban for advocating education of girls in Pakistan. That didn't even come close to stopping her. Since then, she's spoken in front of the UN, written a memoir, and moved to England, where she continues to advocate for education. And now she is the youngest Nobel Prize winner ever. <laughs> ever. And here's what she had to say when she found out that she'd won the Nobel Prize for peace. I believe that the Nobel Committee, they, they haven't given it just to me. But this award is for all those children who are voiceless, whose voices need to be heard. And I speak for them, and I stand up with them, and I join them in their campaign that their voices should be heard, and they should be listened, and they have rights. They have rights. There we go. From the mouths of babes. I can't wait to find out how she is going to change the world. She has already begun to change the world. Thank you so much, Malala.